So there's a lot of stuff happening on board the International Space Station, a lot of different systems uh, that work to support the crew members. And one of those systems actually just celebrated a birthday this week. I think it was seven years running now. And it's the regenerative life support systems on board the International Space Station, a very integral part of just keeping the crew members safe, keeping them alive, keeping them empowered to do their duties. I'm joined now today uh, by Dave Mathers, currently one of the... Uh, managers in the uh, ISS mission uh, evaluation room, the Mer ISS Mer, um, and he used to be used to be an OSO, so you were an operations support officer, correct? Yes, it was. All right, well, you know, pretty important birthday for, for the regenerative ECLIS, the, the life support system, that's pretty cool, and now you were an OSO, you used to work directly with that. What was your role back when you were an OSO to work with this stuff? So the OSOs, they are uh, structures, mechanisms, and maintenance. Mm -hmm. So not only the, the nuts and bolts that hold the space station together, but also fixing and repairing all the systems as they break down uh, or, or need to have the preventive maintenance as, it, as need be. Um, so when uh, I came out of college, I came into the OSO group and was assigned to the ECLIS system. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, Regen ECLIS was still on the ground, still going through its final testing and, and things like that. Um, and they were working to uh, send it up early and to, we were going to install it in the lab before Node 3 mm -hmm. got there because Node 3 was going to be much later. Uh, so we had a lot of work to do to get the system up and get it installed in a place where it wasn't designed to have been installed in the first place. We had to modify the lab and uh, install cables and hoses and uh, mm -hmm. new panels and things yep. like that that didn't need to be, that weren't there before and retrofit some uh, ret retrofitted a, uh, a vent that goes to space so that we could vent the hydrogen eventually uh, when it comes from the uh, oxygen generator. Um, so that was a lot of work and the system was still on the ground and so we hadn't developed any of the procedures for uh, for doing any of the maintenance once it got up on space, right, uh, on the station. Mm -hmm. So uh, being assigned to the ECLIS system and being a new guy, um, I was a little more expendable than the than the folks that were on uh, the console, so <laughs> I got sent out to Marshall a lot. I, okay. I took a lot of trips out to Marshall's place, Space Flight Center um, to do fit checks on the systems as they as they were being installed, um, it, and the OSOs do that a lot for mm -hmm. all, of the, all of the hardware as they're flying. So I'd go and see if the tools fit, if uh, if there's anything different between what the engineering said it was going to look mm -hmm. like. And um, and also since the OSOs train the crew on maintenance, uh, they have an insight as to how the crew is going to see things. So they can do those uh, um, do those fit checks, understand what the crew is going to see, understand what we're going to need to put in the procedures and so on. So I got to get very familiar with all of the regenerative uh, life support systems. And, and hardware, mm -hmm. uh, because I was going and actually seeing all the hardware and putting tools and uh, on the nuts yeah. and bolts and uh, writing down notes and things like that. Okay, well, I mean, since you're, yeah. since you got to live it, you got to breathe it. It yeah. sounds like. Why don't you walk us through kind of the three major components of this regenerative life support system? Sure. Um, and briefly, there's uh, actually kind of a, a fourth. Um, you know, cousin component, okay. as it were, the uh, waste and hygiene compartment. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to come come from there. So when the when the crew members it all starts uh, somewhere. It's all, it all starts somewhere. So the um, they have to go to the bathroom like everybody else. Uh, so when they uh, use the restroom, mm -hmm. uh, the that meets up with some pretreat, uh, which keeps bugs from growing and, and keeps crystals from forming. Yep. So that later when we concentrate it at all, uh, it doesn't clog up the system. Um, it goes from there into the urine processor, which is in WRS, Water Recovery System Rack, mm -hmm. number two. It uh, goes into the urine processor, where there's some filters in there, but mostly just for um, catching fuzz, you know, the lint and stuff that, that may have come out, or, okay. uh, or crystals, or, you know, some solids that may form. But mostly it's uh, uh, a distillery. So it's, it's old technology being applied um, in, in, a new, in a new way. Okay. Um, so the uh, distillation assembly is the heart of the urine processor, uh, and it brings the pressure down, so we, have, we bring it down to near vacuum inside the distillation assembly, and it's just a spinning drum so that it, mm -hmm. it keeps the fluids all on the outside, um, it, one of those uh, low gravity uh, adjustments we need to make. Uh, it does that, um, and we heat it up a little bit and evaporate the water out, and then so whatever's not water gets left behind and that goes around a few times to make sure we mm -hmm. get all the water out uh, so you keep trickling in a little bit more from the um, from the waste hygiene compartment and uh, as it goes 
pulls the water out, and then that water goes into the water processor. Okay. Where it meets up with condensate, uh, condensation that we pull from the air. So our common cabin air assemblies, the heat exchangers, uh, um, their conditioner, basically, okay. for the space station. Yeah. Uh, if you know your air conditioners at home, they condense, or in your car, yeah, yep. they, they condense, right? Um, you know, the, the moisture in the air condenses on the cooler surface. So we draw that moisture out, and this is the moisture that we breathe out you know, when or or that we sweat out from our normal day-to-day activities. This is just activities. more stuff coming from the crew. Yep. I mean, they, yep. they other ways that the crew gets it, rid of water. They're putting more water back into right. the system. Yep. And if we didn't take that out, it would get pretty foggy and steamy inside yeah. the ISS. So, uh, so it meets up with the distillate from the urine processor. Meets up with the uh, mm-hmm. condensation from the uh, heat exchangers from the from the air conditioner. That goes through a filtration system. Um, and uh, ion exchange resins uh, where they, they filter out all the non-water stuff. Yep. Um, still can get through that is uh, um, microbial things that may have been in there, uh, organic kind mm-hmm. of materials. Um, so it goes into a catalytic reactor, uh, which has a catalyst in there and reacts with oxygen. And that basically it uh, um, breaks down the organic compounds that may still be in the water. That goes through a gas separator, pulls that those gas now gaseous mm-hmm. compounds out because they've been broken down, uh, and then the now pure water comes out of that. Yep. Gets goes through an another ion resin where we it adds iodine in, so it's those ion exchange resins they exchange ions. Mm-hmm. So it when there's not ions there, it puts ones in, it takes other ones out if they're there. so the it adds iodine. Then it goes into a storage system that that then goes out to the potable bus. Uh, potable water, uh, drinkable water, has has it has iodine in it. Before the crew actually drinks it, because some crew may be susceptible to iodine. Mm-hmm. Um, not all, and it's it's a generally a safe chemical. The um, uh, Boy Scouts, for example, you bring a little iodine packet yeah. to purify yep. your water, right? Um, so the but we take the iodine out so that it doesn't build up in the crew. Uh, at the potable water dispenser where they drink it, mm-hmm. or um, or it goes to the oxygen generator. Okay, and that's our third part. That's our third. Yep. That's our third part. Yep. Uh, so the oxygen generation assembly, uh, that is basically a um, as an ion exchange, so it takes the iodine back out. So now mm-hmm. it's just pure water again, going into a cell stack, um, where you know water is hydrogen and oxygen, yep. uh, H two O. Um, separates the the you electrolyze it uh, and you separate you know you separate the bonds between mm-hmm. the oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen gets separated off, and the oxygen goes out for the crew to breathe. Yeah. And then the hydrogen then goes and mixes with uh, carbon dioxide that comes from our carbon dioxide removal assembly, not part of regen, but attached, associated. The carbon dioxide mixes in the sabatier, with, uh, does a chemical reaction there uh, with the hydrogen, mm-hmm. and the output of that is water and methane. Then the methane we vent overboard. Yep. Uh, we don't have a use for that. Um, and then the hy- or the water now goes back into the um, condensation bus. Mm-hmm. It basically goes so right back to the beginning of the system and goes back into the end of the system. So we just have this kind of constant loop going and feeding. Constant loop. And feeding. Yep. So and the crew drinks the water. It goes back into their system at the potable water dispenser. Um, and they mm-hmm. breathe the oxygen back in. So that that comes back in. comes back out of CO2. That, yep. goes, that goes around and around. The water goes around and around. All right. Yesterday's well, coffee becomes today's coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, just listening to that, there's a ton of stuff happening in these systems, and yeah. it's been running for seven years now. This isn't something that's been running, you know, nonstop without any issues. It's almost like, that's true. you know, plumbing in any house, apartment, complex, anything. Yeah. Issues happen. Right. But that's almost important for us because we needed to learn how to fix those issues, right? That's right. Um, so, a big part of, uh, and this is going to get to one of your later questions that I already know is coming, uh, is developing the technology for future use, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, We hadn't had a regenerative system on Space Station before. It's a one-off system, so it's not not like your car that you have here on the ground or something like that, where they've built thousands of them, and they've been building thousands of them for many, many years. Those still break down, and we still have to fix them. We just take that for rope. Well, on, on, on board, we got this large system that's the only one 
and we're using it as it goes, and we're learning about it as it goes. Some mm -hmm. things that uh, we didn't know were going to happen, uh, or that we didn't fully understand about some tweaks and things like that. For you know, it operates a little differently on orbit than it did here on the ground, and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, one of the the major things that we needed to uh, overcome early was um, the uh, the crew members. There, and this goes into the science and part of the reason where you were talking earlier about we have a crew member on board for one year. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that they try to learn is what it does to your body. Now, one of the things that, that happens is uh, because you're not putting stresses on your bones, mm -hmm. um, your your body isn't constantly replenishing or replacing the, the minor little stress fractures in your bones and is constantly regenerating your bone. On orbit, you don't have all those stresses. So uh, kind of like muscles can atrophy if you're not using yep. them. You know, you're not using yep. your bones, they can atrophy too. Uh, so the calcium leaches out of your bones. Well, when they were doing all the testing here on the ground, it was with people who walk around in gravity didn't all the time. Didn't have that problem. Right. Didn't have that problem. Uh, and we didn't fully understand how much calcium was really coming out of the crew. Mm -hmm. um, we found out very early on with uh, the distillation assembly where it concentrates the urine, right? Uh, the pretreated urine. Mm -hmm. um, the pretreat is, uh, amongst other chemicals, uh, has sulfuric acid in it. Uh, and it's it's very acidic, or pH about yep. two, right? It's very acidic stuff. Um, well, the sulfuric acid, the sulfur ions in the sulfuric acid were reacting with the calcium ions from the crew and making um, basically gypsum, oh. calcium sulfide, uh, which is not soluble, and uh, it it clogged up the system. It clogged mm. up the distillation assembly, and uh, um, gypsum is uh, uh, drywall. Okay, yeah. the stuff inside yep. the So imagine crumbling a bunch of that yeah. up and putting it in inside of Probably a, a, not complex, good for a complex machinery. A complex machinery. Um, so that's something that we learned, and uh, we reduced our concentration level mm -hmm. uh, from that. You know, we're, we stopped. Uh, we stopped before it got that much water taken out, so it was still soluble at that point. And then inside, what we're working on right now will be actually should be instituting this uh, this coming increment mm -hmm. is uh, an alternate pretreat. So we okay. learned from this, and we uh, are changing our pretreat to a different chemical. I think it's phosphorus based, but um, yeah. And then it, but it stays in solution when it reacts with the calcium. Okay. So, so I mean, we we have this complex system. It's been running for seven years now. And before you know, before we all want to get into, you know, why is something like this going to be important for you know a future mission to Mars? Why is something like yeah. this so vital? And also, you know, not just Mars, has this been, I mean, this is a very complex technology. And you, you said, you mentioned a lot of things down here on the ground that it's similar to. Have there been any kind of feedbacks, any benefits received down here on Earth from the work we've been doing up in space? Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, for the most part, um, they're, it's standard technologies or, or old technology, distilling, for mm -hmm. example, that's, that's been going on for uh, eons now, yeah. right? Um, and uh, a lot of moonshine stills out in, in the backwoods <laughs> of, uh, of the Smoky Mountains. Um, this one's just water, though. This one's just water. Uh, so that's that's a uh, it's not a, a new technological development. It is it was a difficult challenge getting that to work mm -hmm. in zero gravity. So applying zero gravity kind of solutions and developments like that to the ground it is it doesn't translate as well the other direction sometimes. Yeah. Um, but what about, so, trip to Mars, why is yeah. this going to be so vital? Um, well, to finish your other, other question mm -hmm. real quick, I'm sorry, uh, is that one of the things that we have used, though, is the, the microbial check valve. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an, one of those ions, that uh, ion exchange resins, and it lets the, the water go through, but it, because it's a microbial uh, barrier, keeps the microbes from going through. Mm -hmm. That's actually being used in uh, third world countries, disaster uh, relief efforts, that kind of thing. Um, there's a, a, a non-profit company called uh, Care for Kids, mm -hmm. or Concern for Kids, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, that does that. So they, they, they are using some of our technology here on the ground. Um, but most of it, the mm -hmm. oxygen generator that's used in submarines, yep. that kind of thing. Um, important for going to Mars, uh, and part of why it was important for us to install here, is that uh, we go through a lot of water. As, as people, we don't you don't realize that you're thirsty, just get a drink, and uh, but we can go through up to a liter of water a day. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, not always. Some people are different, but it, we'd go through an awful mm -hmm. lot of water. And water's heavy, yes. um, and getting things to space, you pay by the pound. Uh, so um, it's expensive to pay for things by mm -hmm. the pound, and it's expensive to to get all that water up there. We're supporting a lot of crew. That's. Uh, 
Yep. And that's mass that you could be using for bringing up hardware. Yep. More science, more, more food, science, more, more anything exactly. else. Yep. Um, so conserving as much water as possible is, uh, is very important. Um, so and we conserve most of it. Right now we're recovering about 75% percent of the of the water from the from the urine and the condensate mm -hmm. uh, hopefully in the future with this new preacher we can go much higher than that so going to mars you won't be able to send them water all the time yeah. you won't be able to no resupply flights no re yep. that, right or very few yep. and so you don't want to use all that space for water when you could recover it so that's uh, that's why that's very, been right. very important well again Space Station Regenerative Eclipse, the the life support, the water recycling, everything turning seven this week. Very exciting. I mean, seven years down, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of advancements in the future as we continue to get ready for the journey to Mars. A lot more work to be done. Again, Dave Mathers, one of our uh, ISS MER managers here uh, for Mission Control. Thanks so much for joining me today, giving us a, a real in-depth look at everything that's going on on that. I really appreciate it, and thanks again for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you.